Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to The 100 Report. I'm Chris. I'm Charlie. And, well, we've had the first 100 match and we both attended. I'm sure the guys who were following us on Twitter noticed we were putting videos up and we sat ourselves in the JM Finn stand and had really rather a lovely time, didn't we? It was so refreshing to be out in the hot London sky for a lovely night of cricket at the Oval. It was amazing. I was just, we were both grinning from ear to ear just to be back in the stadium. It was almost back to normal. It was fantastic. But what I loved about the competition, obviously there was the razzmatazz, that there was a huge sort of firework display to begin with. There's lots of, I mean, not that we needed any more heat in that stadium, we were boiling, but there was all these flames going off everywhere. But what I loved was it was totally really family friendly. There were so many young kids there getting involved. The presenters were going up to individual kids and getting them to do little dances or singing to the big screen in between um, so the, the we don't call them overs, but in, in between the turnaround of the balls. Um, it was fantastic. This, the atmosphere was amazing. Yeah, there was a lot to enjoy if you're like one of the cricket badgers, you know, somebody that's really into the cricket. And it's to do with the idea that there were quite a lot of differences, I thought. So the big one, it took me a little while to notice. They had a, store, a scoreboard that was more akin to what we know as uh, cricket fans. But they also had one that was very sort of simple. It just said, there's the amount of balls left. That's the amount of runs to get. And it took a little while, I must be honest, to sort of get used to it. But then I went, actually, this is making it far more simple. And it goes to the amount of balls rather than overs. And there was a little clock that said, right, the innings has to finish by this time or you get penalised. Um, from what I remember, there's fielding restrictions that come into place if you're late on how long your innings lasts. We're going to see it at some point. I'm just intrigued to see what it's like but how, how did you find the whole razzmatazz and the um you know the fireworks the music uh, all of the you know the, the crowd entertainment that sort of stuff I thought it was really fun like you we didn't stop and actually so each innings they try and um I think they, they give themselves an hour and a half to do 100 balls um, so the whole the whole thing lasts about two and a half hours. Actually, sorry, maybe it's just over an hour they allow for each innings. So with the entertainment halfway, it started at 6.30, it finishes at, it finished at nine. Um, it just happens so quickly, you've got to enjoy every single moment because in, when the fielders are changing positions and at the end of 10 balls when they switch sides, there's DJs playing, there's presenters talking to you, there's something to, to catch your attention the whole time, which is why it's so great for kids, right? Um, I, I do agree with you, it was, quite, it was quite an interesting concept. Both of us were kind of scratching our heads to begin with and looking around at the scoreboard and, and being like, well, how many overs has she balled? And, and so what's her economy rate with that? And it's, you've got to completely start from scratch almost with this, with this competition. Um, and, and absorb what's been given to you as information because it is a different way that they feed you this information. But you do get that countdown when the, when the second team come on to bat and then it's all about counting down those 100 balls. And it's really easy to follow, but once you get out of your head, six balls, overs, that kind of thing, and you take it for what it is, it's really easy to understand and really easy to get excited about. I yeah you have said exactly what I think and I'm intrigued to actually watch it on the TV tonight I don't know I didn't watch any of the highlights from last night other than um, Kate Cross's six uh, we'll get to that and <laughs> a, a couple of other bits but um, yeah I am intrigued to watch it on the TV because one of the things that was going on throughout all of the social medias which is a perfect time for my plug if you're not following us on socials please do we are on Instagram at the hundred report on Twitter at hundred report and we are on youtube the hundred report if you're watching this obviously so please subscribe he always finds a way of getting that in there i'm getting really good at it as well i actually think as well on strange segue we need to name that statue behind you um i, I think i think godfrey it strikes me as godfrey godfrey yeah um i don't know maybe we should have it as like the orange cap holder or whatever whatever <laughs> color cap holder it's going to be for the for the best batsman or batswoman of the time it might just change <laughs> <laughs> um yeah well i've sort of lost my train of thought but i guess we should go on to talking about the match but instead of us two chatting about it how about we get a couple of people that were actually playing in the match and we'll have them on the podcast right now um, yeah, do you want to do, do the big reveal and reveal who we've got as very special guests on the podcast today? 
I'm so excited, guys. Um, we have the captain of the Manchester Originals, Kate Cross, and she's joined by her fellow No Balls podcast um, mate, Alex Hartley. Okay, we are really, really privileged to have Kate Cross and Alex Hartley on our podcast. How are you? I can see that you guys are in different places at the moment. We are indeed. Cross is currently on the way back from London from our game yesterday, and I'm still here because I'm commentating this evening. Of course, of course, that makes sense. And uh, yeah, Kate, you're on the long drive back to Manchester. Yeah, yeah, we start, it didn't start well because the bus broke down and we hadn't even left the hotel, so we were stuck no. in a hotel for an extra hour. Yeah, but uh, no, I'd, it was worth it for what we had last night. I'd take a broken down bus for what we got. Well, that was going to be my, my opening gambit, so to speak, was first off, congratulations on, on being a part of history last night. Um, it was obviously it was a shame for Manchester Originals that the result went the way that it did. But I mean, we, we were there. We were in the JM Finn stand watching what a game of cricket. Um, how was it for you guys to, to be on that stage and to be part of that entire thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was honestly incredible. Like me and I were speaking about this this morning. It felt like it felt better than international cricket in terms of the atmosphere that I've like, ever heard a crowd have. Um, and it just, it was just something really special. Like we knew that we were going to make history last night. And I said that to the girls before we went out, that no matter the result, just enjoy it because you're never going to get this opportunity to have this first again. Um, but yeah, it, it just felt, it, it's hard to put into words, but it just felt like, I'm going to say the word special again, because I can't think of anything else. Yeah, it, was, it was a class. <laughs> it, it, honestly, it, it, it was so wicked. The only way I can describe it is like when, the Oval Invincibles went out to field and all the fireworks went off. Like I got goosebumps. I was like, this is world class. Like this is one of the best games of cricket I've ever been involved in. It was like oh, up there with, you know, the World Cup final back in 2017 for me. It just felt really special. And I noticed as well a lot of a lot of the players couldn't resist but having a little boogie and having a little dance <laughs> on the field itself. Um, because the atmosphere was just amazing. What did you guys did you guys manage to um, listen to the halftime entertainment as well? Yeah, tactically, one of our coaches was doing like ground fielding over where Becky Hill was. So there was about eight of us that went over there. I just watched that and took it in turns. And the, the coaching staff said it was really funny to watch because we were all watching Becky Hill and then someone to get a tap on the shoulder and be like, she also to feel the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah, it's, you don't take that into account, do you? When Because obviously you guys are pre, uh, doing pre-match training and stuff like that. When there's all that stuff going on around you, it must be like this is a new level of distraction um to rather than focus on doing some ground fielding drills and things like that <laughs> we actually we actually spoke about that as a team because we said that that is ultimately the hundred like the cricket's the cricket that'll take care of itself but the hundred is about you know the bells and whistles that's going to come with it it's about the, the tactical differences it's going to be about getting used to different ways of doing run rates and things like that um but we just wanted to take it all in last night because the it was just so honestly so electric and the fans were amazing and I almost I hate to say it but I wasn't no, that we lost because it was yeah it just it didn't it didn't feel like we lost we got in the dressing room and everyone was so buzzing um even like I didn't get a, a wink of sleep last night because I was just so hyped up about it so, I, so, um, honestly it was mental I actually text Crossy last night about 20 past four in the morning saying are you awake I can't sleep she was like yeah same so she came to my room and we just discussed the cricket game at like 5 a.m <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. That's so cool. I mean, Chris summed it up really, really well last night in a statement. What did you say about the 100 last night, Chris? Oh, I said it's somewhere between cricket and a party. Um, and I think that was, uh, hopefully, I, that was my tagline. I tweeted it out and um, it's, it's, it seemed to generally be a, a very apropos statement about it all. Um, but yeah, obviously... And that's a good place to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, we were yeah. in the crowd and the big thing that I noticed that there was an... From the crowd perspective, it was a big party and it was very fun to watch, which I know is the, is the big remit of the game. Um, but there was also a noticeable like family uh, feel to the game. I know one of the tweets that I read um, this morning when I was scrolling through cricket Twitter was um, that there was not so much a queue at the bar, but there was um, a, a, a massive queue at the ice cream truck. And that sort of summed it up, the kind of family atmosphere that was, that was going on. Did you feel from the playing perspective that it felt different to, 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 uh, to matches that you've been in before? 
think I think what was different from my perspective is that there was thousands of people there. We've never had that domestic level before, and and obviously me and Crossy have played international cricket, and you get fans in, but. You know, we've, we've got Laura Jackson in our squad who's never played on TV before and that was her TV debut and she was so nervous. She said her legs were trembling but we were just like, just take it in. Like This is once in a lifetime opportunity. You, like, as Crossy said in the team talk, we're making history. The result doesn't matter. And um, like I've strangely never been prouder to lose a cricket game and, it, and it's such a weird thing to say but it was just such a brilliant day to be a part of. I was just going to say on the fan thing, like international cricket, we get a lot of in women's cricket. That is, we we kept losing you. But um, Kate, actually, my question is next to you. But I, I don't know if we're going to be able to hear your answer. Um, you've now got the record as the first six in the whole competition ever. How did that feel hitting that? Do you know what? I'm glad she's got no signal so she can't answer it because she'll be <laughs> wanting you to bring that up and she'll have been saying, bring it up, bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it in. Alex, yeah. why, don't, um, why don't I ask a question to you whilst we're waiting for Kate to come back on? But um, I was going to ask about your bowling. Do you go into a spell knowing you're going to either bowl five consecutive balls or ten? Do you see how it goes? On how does that kind of, does your framework kind of change knowing you've got five balls rather than six? Does your, does your attack change at all? No, I, I think the cricket is exactly the same. You know, you, you've got to hit the stumps to take wickets. Um, obviously, it's different. I think what was really interesting from last night is Crossy's tactics to Danae Van Neerkirk's tactics were completely different. So both teams went about their bowling innings in two separate ways. <laughs> so, yeah, I think they had quite a lot of people bowl 10 balls in a row, whereas we did like fives and we were short and sharp and tried to get through our overs as quick as possible and put as much pressure on in that way um, and I suppose it's one of those where we're just learning on the job so so Crossy has only captained two games of the 100 before and and um, you know she's gone right this is the way we're going to go about it and she'll have learned from how Danae went about her bowling innings and vice versa so the tactic thing is is hard but it's something we're just going to have to get used to and, and learn on the job. Yeah we really saw the difference in, in tactics there and we also we thought it was actually really great that you were switching up every five balls sort of you don't know what you're going to get next who's going to come at you I thought it was fantastic. Kate now we've got you back I definitely need to re-ask this question because it is a big one. Um, you hit the first six of the whole competition ever in history how did that feel to score that, that those runs? Yeah I mean it was it was pretty cool um, especially because I thought I was definitely going to be the person that gets hit the six first. Um, so yeah, it's cool that that's what I mean. Like last night was so many firsts and so many girls have got their own little things that they can take away from it. Um, so yeah, it was cool. Well, I guess I wanted to move on because obviously you're, you're captain in the team. And um, well, from a captain's perspective, we obviously yeah. saw uh, Donny Van Nierke give a couple of her bowlers a full 10 at, at the top. Um, and I noticed that you went for mixing up a lot more and did, uh, I think off the top of my head, I think it was almost all five ball um, uh, intervals was it a clear plan to keep predominantly yeah. the five balls or um is that something that really just depended on the batter and the situation yeah a bit of both really um i haven't ruled out the 10 ball thing but i did think that i probably wouldn't use it as much as you know i'd try and change it up because i think in 2020 cricket you obviously go different bowler at different ends and you'd always try and change up the skill of that bowler as well so you wouldn't necessarily have two seamers you'd kind of go spin seam left arm spin whatever um, but yeah, like I, like I was saying, it was interesting to see how Dane used her bowlers. Um, and I think you get a gut feel as a captain. Like if someone's bowling well, you want to keep them on. Or if a new batter then comes in, you want to get them on strike. So um, yeah, I think, like Al said, we're just going to have to keep learning as we play. And those tactics, I think, will probably become a bit more, more clearer as we get to the back end of the tournament. Well, I suppose the thing is with bowling 10 ball overs as well, it's quite often when you've got a set batter like, let's just say, Harman Preet Kaur, she can line somebody up after four or five yeah. balls and say, right, now I'm going to go on the attack because I know they're going to bowl another five and I can see what the ball's doing off the pitch. So our tactic was to mix things up and not let the batters feel settled. Yeah, I, 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 I guess from my sort of um, armchair uh, armchair cricket perspective, I was like, I, I, I sort of went, um, that seems to be what they're going for is that, constantly mixing it up and constantly not letting a bat batter settle it was interesting because we got to it was uh, 135 was the total that the Manchester Originals made um 
I guess we we don't really know what um, like what a good total is at the moment yet. But did yesterday give you a, a, any better idea of what to expect in terms of is that is that a decent total? Do you think it's going to be more less? Um, what what were your thoughts on it? Yeah, we spoke about that as a team as well. We said we don't know what a good total is. Um, but I guess going off 100 balls, you want to be scoring at least a runner ball. So, you know, your minimum is 100. Um, but I think 120, 130, 140 in the women's game will probably be a par score. I think in the men's game, you're probably looking at 160, 170 just uh, because of the nature of the game that they play now. But um, that was one of the reasons why we batted first. We thought we don't know what a good score is, but if we've got runs on the board, it might put pressure on the Invincibles to chase that down. I think we, we came off the field yesterday and we knew we were 15 short as well. We'd, we'd left a few yeah. runs out there. Well, we well, from the stands, we definitely thought that was a really great score. And uh, But, you know, I'm sure it's going to get more and more as, a, as the competition progresses. But, Kate, from a, bo- from a bowler's point of view, what do you think are more important in this, such a short format? Do you think dot balls are more important or wickets? Well, a dot, uh, dot ball is a... Sorry, a wicket is a dot ball. So... Um, yeah, only time you're taking wickets, you're slowing the run rate down immediately because you've got new batters coming in trying to get themselves into the game. Um, so wickets, I think, will win you the game. I think dot balls can keep you in a game longer. Um, but I think in the format that we're playing now with this 100, I think wickets are going to be key. For sure. And um, Alex, I have to ask you about your, um, your hosting as well, because I know that you're working with the BBC commentating. How are you juggling playing full time as well as commentating? I mean, I yeah. take my hat off you. <laughs> yeah, great question. I'm extremely busy, but um, it's the only way that I earn a living. So, and I love commentating and I love playing. And, and while I can balance the both, both of them, at, you know, and, and make it work, I'll do it as long as possible. So, every single men's game that they play after us, I work. So, I'm going to be in the same location. So, that's fine. And then basically every other day, um, I'll train and then play the next day. So, it's, it's going to be a busy month, but it's, uh, it's definitely worth it because I love doing both. That's fantastic. Well, I, I, was, I was saying as well, Al, uh, before you came on, like for us as female athletes, it's amazing to be able to get our names out there in the men's game as well. So you commentating is so good for your profile and raising awareness of the women's game as well. So I think it's really important you're doing what you're doing, as tired as you are when you turn up to training. <laughs> And then as, as well as that, you guys have got your No Balls podcast, which we're huge fans of. We absolutely love it. Are you guys going to continue to do that throughout the competition? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We've got some big guests lined up and um, we're still going to be doing them weekly and, and try and get as many um, big names on the podcast as possible. Wow. Yeah, we, also, we, we thought like for the start of the 100, there's no one that's kind of got a better inside view of it than me and Alex. And the fact that we have a podcast every week, hopefully we'll give people an insight into what it's actually like. And um, I guess all the behind, behind the scenes stuff that people won't see, we get to provide that for people, which is cool. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. I mean, case in point, I mean, how often do you get to talk to a player in the middle of a tournament on the coach in between matches? It doesn't really happen, but it's... um, Yeah, obviously, if our listeners uh, aren't aren't listening to the No Balls podcast, then why aren't you? Go and listen to it right now, because it's fantastic. Um, But yeah, look, obviously, Kate, Alex, thank you so much for being on on our podcast. We appreciate you guys are monumentally busy, so we really appreciate it. I do have... Yeah, uh, really busy. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> well, I do have one more question uh, from, from me before we go. Um, now, obviously, the Manchester original men's team are playing tonight. Um, so my question is, how many are the Manchester originals team going to win by tonight? Good question. I think they will win by seven runs. Oh, close one. Um, I, think, I do think they'll win. Um, I think I'll go a bit bigger. I'll go 20. 20 Ooh. runs. Okay, okay. I'm loving, I'm loving it. And then um, final question from me, guys. Who do you think are the team to beat in the, amongst the women's teams? I think London Spirit. Yeah, I think London Spirit. And I, I genuinely think us. Like, we, we have a really good side and a, a really strong batting lineup. We literally bat all the way down to number 10. Um, me, me and number 11. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself so some credit. Do. We've got, a, we've got a, a number three batter for the domestic game at, at number 10 in our competition. So I do think we're the team to beat. And it's, it's just unfortunate yesterday didn't go our way. Well, it was exciting. It went literally down to the wire. We had such a great time. Again, thanks so much, girls, for joining us. We're going to be rooting for you for the, throughout the competition. Thanks again. No problem. Thanks no for having us. Thank you. Well, that was fantastic. It's always so nice to get the players on. And I, I cannot believe we got them on, not even 24 hours after 
the match ended. It's great. And you know what's amazing is that we were speaking earlier and in the podcast, the fact that we don't know what the past scores are. Um, there, there, you know, there is no stats to start with. So we're now building on those, it's really great to get their opinion on what, what they think is a good score. Um, and yeah, who, who are the teams to beat and stuff. So we'll see if their predictions turn out right. Yeah, well, obviously, by the time this has gone out, the men's match will be starting imminently. So let's let's see I, i'm intrigued we're going to get some big names um a quick catch-up of some news unfortunately sandeep lamachani's visa didn't get approved so he um will not be featuring for the oval invincibles but they have replaced him with the south african spin bowler to brace shamsi who i think is a very good uh switch he's also one of the best spinners in the world he's certainly according to t20 rankings and i don't think it's going to affect the overseas players being unavailable for oval and i still think that they're in a hugely advantageous position having the overseas players that they do but that is it for us obviously we're going to be doing more of these things um throughout the contest we're going to do a weekly roundup so at the end of each round of teams playing each other so is that is that eight matches or is that four matches i can't remember the maths off the top of my head but we'll do a, a catch-up after each round of games and we'll keep you up to date with what's going on but as we said before if you're not liked and subscribed yet please please do underneath it makes all the difference and we really appreciate you guys following us and like i said before we're also on instagram at the hundred report and on twitter at hundred reports and please do send us your questions even if we don't know the answer we will dig deep to try and find it for you but that's it uh, from me so i'll say ta for now and see you on the next one speak to you soon guys take care Thank you.